Hello again, Smithtown Christian School. Can you believe that tomorrow's already May? Um, I know for me, it's absolutely crazy how fast this year has been going. And uh, I don't know if it's fast or slow through distance learning for you. Uh, for me, each day is slow, but the weeks go by fast. So I can't believe we're several weeks into this and we're looking at finishing this school year strong. So remember that we're always there for you. Reach out, let us know how we can help. Your teachers are there, I'm there, Mrs. Burner is there. Uh, we are all there for you. So this week, I wanna to talk to you about a name that has been coming up um, multiple times through multiple teachers, other administration, and that name is Barnabas. Uh, so it's that name, that person, that I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about today. But before we jump into what his name actually means, let me talk to you about that person himself. What we see in Acts is that the apostles knew a man named Joseph. Now, back then, names meant a lot. Not that they don't necessarily now, but I believe that they meant a whole lot more back then. So this man named Joseph went with and knew the apostles very well. It's the apostles who ended up calling him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Now, this is something I found interesting over the years because I've noticed that Joseph was actually a giver initially. So why not call him by a name such as uh, Hananan, which is one that I looked up today, meaning generous or charitable. Who knows? Anyway, uh, I digress. So let's discuss a little bit more about Barnabas, who gave and gave everything, who was generous. He gave his resources, he gave his abilities, he gave his word, and he ended up giving himself. So I'd love to touch on each one of these. The first time we hear of Barnabas is in Acts. Acts 4, 36 through 7, which reads, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So here we see Barnabas giving, for the first time, of everything, of his resources, of things that he owned. He sold it and gave it to the apostles. So next we see him giving his abilities. Some of Barnabas' abilities uh, were to teach and to preach, and he did this in many places, one of which was Antioch. Acts 11, 25 through 26, says, then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a, uh, for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. So yet again, we see Barnabas using his abilities, giving of his abilities to teach, and he did that for a whole year in Antioch, where he taught great numbers of peoples. So next we have Barnabas giving of his word. So he did this essentially by testifying for Saul, who would later be named Paul, and we all know who Paul is. Barnabas gave his word by testifying in Acts 9 to support Saul's transformation to the other disciples. Those disciples at the time were skeptical of Saul's change because of the man who he was prior to that change. Okay, so let's track this real quick. Paul previously named Saul, was backed by a guy named Joseph, who was later to be named Barnabas, who arguably could have been named Hananon. Tracking? Okay, great, because I'm, I think I'm not. Anyway, um, so that's where Barnabas gave his word. Lastly, it is believed that Barnabas gave his life. Barnabas died a martyr, giving his life, giving again of his life to the very end. So, through this, what we have is Barnabas being able to bring the truth of Jesus to others. He was able to continue to encourage them with this truth through his giving. And I'm sure it's that encouragement that the other apostles saw, which was the reason why they would call him Barnabas, or son of encouragement. So I, I always like to bring this back to how does this apply to us today? So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sick of discussing COVID-19 and this epidemic. However, that is the world we live in. It is this world that we live in as Christians and this world that we are called to as Christians to share the gospel. Included in this is being an encouragement to those around us. 
Now, I'm not saying we are called to do as Barnabas did and sell our land, sell our possessions and, and give that to others. Um, if you are, God bless you. I don't believe I am at this moment. Um, but I am saying what we should do is use our gifts, our talents, our skills that God has given us to show his love now more than ever. One very practical way that I've seen this done is by watching a good friend of mine use her ability uh, as essentially a seamstress or her ability to sew and be creative with that to sew headbands with buttons on them for frontline workers. Um, these frontline workers have been wearing face masks day in and day out, and it's been causing discomfort and, and distress around their ears. So she's been able to create these headbands that have buttons on them. I, I'm sure other people have as well, um, and, and give them to the frontline workers so that they can put those bands from their face masks around those buttons to remove the stress around their ears. Now, I'm sure this encourages them um, as they no longer feel as much discomfort. So what can you do? I know many of you, many of our students, our teachers, our faculty have talents and abilities that, that I don't know yet. So I would love to hear about them, but I, I am challenging you to now use those gifts, those talents, your abilities that God has given you to encourage others with them, just as Barnabas did. So in closing, be a Barnabas today. Use your God-given gifts, talents, and abilities to encourage others. Thank you so much, and God bless.